The Steam Deck has always been compatible with USB-C docking stations. It's just that this one is officially made by Valve. Also, they recently released an update to give you an overall better docking experience with resolution modes and such. The Nintendo Switch dock is stupid and dumb. It's basically just a glorified hub. There's nothing special about it. The Steam Deck dock is also stupid and dumb. There's nothing special about it. It's also a glorified hub. There's a misconception about the Nintendo Switch dock that it has some sort of processing inside of it or some sort of upscaling technology in it that allows the image to go up to 1080p because most games portably run at just 720p. That's not the case. There's nothing in the dock to do that. It's just that it runs on AC power, so it can clock the CPU as much as it wants. It's not gonna drain any battery because it's running off of AC power. And the same goes for this Steam Deck dock. The difference is that the Steam Deck is already a powerhouse. Also, you don't need a dock in order to output video on the Steam Deck. All you need is just a little dongle. Any old dongle would work. The case isn't the same for the Nintendo Switch. The Switch with the dock only gives you a max of 1080p 60 frames per second, where the Steam Deck and dock give you a max of 4K 60 frames per second albeit a, a terrible 4K 60 frames per second. You're best off locking it to like a 1440p 60 frames per second, which is still pretty great. But it's the options that are exciting here with the Steam Deck. But it's the ease of use that's exciting here about the Switch. I love my Steam Deck. It's gotten more use out of me than my Switch lately. But this video isn't just gonna be a technical dunking on the Switch, there are still merits to both. Sometimes the highest number isn't always better. Sometimes you just want things to work. This video is sponsored by Surfshark. Hey, Bob, how's it going? Ah, uh, Nemui this. What the hell did you just say? Sokia Skoshi Is this a bit or something? Hey! Yeah, bye, go I uh, had my VPN set to Japan because I was watching uh, Japanese Netflix. You see, VPNs can help you change your location so that you can access content that might otherwise be blocked in your country. They can also help you encrypt your data so that nobody on your network can see what you're doing, not even your ISP. Okay, I get all that, but you were talking in Japanese. Yes. That's not a feature of the VPN. You don't know that. Do it again. No. Surfshark can also help you send and receive files securely and protect your important data. If you want to give Surfshark a try, all you have to do is click the link in the description below and use code WOLFDEN for a whole 83% off plus three months for free. That's a whole lot of deal. Hey, how do you say I'm a big fat loser in Japanese? No, I'm not a, I'm not like a weeb or anything. Okay, what's Spy X family about? Stop. A spy Stop. assassin Stop. Stop. and Stop. a telepath. The Steam Deck is just a Linux computer that Valve prettied up and made into a game console. That was a gross oversimplification. But as such, you can use the Steam Deck's USB-C port just like you would on any old Linux computer. Many months ago, I plugged the Steam Deck into my Thunderbolt 4 docking station just on a whim. The one I use every day for my M1 MacBook. It's connected to both my monitors, my audio interface, and my mouse and keyboard. It all just worked, and worked almost without flaw. This should not have surprised me as much as it did. I guess it surprised me because I'm coming off of the heels of the Nintendo Switch, which only works with the official Nintendo Switch dock, or I guess docks that are specifically made for the Nintendo Switch. And that dock doesn't really give you many options. You have two USB 2.0 ports on the side, one HDMI 2.0 port on the inside, the USB-C for power, and depending on the model of dock, you either have a USB 3.0 port on the inside or an ethernet port. I'd take the ethernet on the inside over a USB port any day because that internal USB port has always been occupied by an ethernet adapter anyway. 
This new official Steam Deck dock boasts three USB 3.1 ports, one Ethernet port, a USB-C for power only, an HDMI 2.0 port, and a DisplayPort 1.4 port. And it's very tiny and compact. You can't say the same for the Switch dock. That thing is unnecessarily large. All the meat of that dock is just this big. There's no reason for that dock to be as big as it is. To protect the screen maybe, but that original Nintendo Switch dock model has been known to eat up screens. Anyway, the Steam Deck is weird and has the USB-C port on the top. So the dock has this wire that sticks out and connects to the top of the Steam Deck while it sits in the dock. So it's not mounted in any way. It can be moved and slide around, which is fine. It's sometimes useful if you wanna move it around or, or, or even get to the back of the dock easily. This dock was $90 and it came straight from Valve and it came with an additional official Steam Deck charger, which is awesome. I love using original hardware for charging so you can be certain there won't be charging issues or battery health issues and having an extra one is always great. The Nintendo Switch dock MSRP'd for only $80, so $10 cheaper and it also came with a charger, but you can't find those for sale anymore. But I mean, they also came as a free pack-in with every Nintendo Switch. The biggest asterisk with the Steam Deck dock is that there's nothing special about valves. You can just get any old USB-C dock, which is a good thing. This one is black and it's nice looking and it comes with the official charger and it's got a nice little valve logo on it. That's pretty much it. There are tons of alternatives out there. One of the most popular ones that beat valves to market is only $50 and it's pretty much identical. I didn't get any of these to test because I'm pretty confident they're all gonna be pretty much identical and I'm sure there will be plenty of YouTube videos that will compare all different types of cheaper alternatives. That Thunderbolt 4 docking station that I use for my MacBook is, is, is a tough comparison because that one is $330. Thunderbolt 4 is a different beast and way, way overkill for what we're doing here with the Steam Deck. What I can compare it to is this random anchor hub that I got for $22 and that runs fantastic. It's just weird and ugly and hangs out of your Steam Deck, but functionally it's pretty great. Now you're probably watching this trying to consider how the Steam Deck dock would fit in your setup at home. Most people would probably want to use this with their TV. This thing has an HDMI 2.0 port in the back, which will be perfectly fine for getting 4K 60 frames per second on your TV. TV's too big. You probably wouldn't wanna go any higher than that anyway, because remember, it's a handheld game console, not a PS5. Okay, so I did a lot of this video testing on the monitor, getting really technical and stuff, but I completely neglected how great this thing is as an emulation machine and how great it is to have it plugged into a TV. I understand that I'm a little weird. I like to play my Nintendo Switch at my desk setup, so I have it plugged into a computer monitor most of the time. This thing has a DisplayPort output, and I recommend using a DisplayPort output wherever applicable. It drives me absolutely <laughs> crazy when people have these like pretty expensive computer setups and monitors and they have it all plugged in, bottlenecked with a low bandwidth HDMI cable just because it's more convenient for them. I mean, it's probably fine either way, but if you want the most bandwidth possible with less room for error, your best bet is to just use a DisplayPort cable, whatever you can. I guess it doesn't really matter and that whole rant isn't really applicable here because the Steam Deck isn't really capable of much bandwidth anyway. It does recognize the resolution and frame rate capable of the display it's plugged into. This resolution setting option is part of a recent update to the UI. The Steam Deck's UI is not the best. It could be way worse though, as I've seen in many other similar devices. Back when I first got the Steam Deck and I used that other docking station that I have, the Steam Deck kind of didn't know what to do with it and just forced everything up to a 4K resolution, which broke some of the UI. And there was no setting to change that. But soon after that, there was another update and the games worked fine for the most part. 
games usually have their own resolution settings, just like they would on a computer. Some of you might not be familiar with PC stuff, but you can set the resolution of the desktop, just like you can in, in this. And then in the game, you can set it to a different resolution. And that usually fucks everything up. So setting the resolution of the system to the resolution of the games that you want to play is probably your best option. So now we have resolution settings in the UI and they work fine. It defaults to a 16 by 10 resolution because that's what the Steam Deck screen is. And that's stretched on a normal monitor. So setting it to 1440p fixes that. Now you can push it up to 4K 60 frames per second, but it is very slow and jittery, even just in the UI. Games will all default to 720p as if it's a Switch, but as, as the chat, just let me know, you can change the options before you actually get into the game to unlock all the way up to 4K in some games. Never ever do that because it sounds like the Steam Deck's gonna explode. Also, it runs like absolute garbage, but it's impressive that it's even an option. Throw a grenade, why? Whoa! Oh my God, that was bad. But after testing with the resolution settings on the UI for a little bit and going back and forth, it broke and wouldn't fix itself. I couldn't reset the resolution at all when connected to that particular display. It was just a black screen. There was a thread on Reddit that seemed to have a fix by deleting certain files in the desktop mode, but that didn't work. The only thing that worked was switching back to using the HDMI port. So right now, as it stands, I just can't use the display port on this particular monitor because it will give me a black screen because it has that setting saved and there's no way to reset it. So I have to wait for them to release a system update that will allow me to reset the resolution with like a hardware key, just like they have on the Xbox consoles. If you have an issue like that, you can reset the resolution by just holding the power button and the eject button at the same time. But that's like the only problem that I have with this thing. And it's kind of a double-edged sword. On the one hand, the Steam Deck can do a lot of really cool stuff and it works. But on the other hand, it might not necessarily be stable when it does some of these things. And it might not necessarily be easy to do the things that you wanna do. It's very versatile in that it can connect to a multitude of different controllers, hell, even Joy-Cons, but it's unstable in that the stick clicks don't work in Steam's UI, but they work in games, which could be a problem when doing something as simple as using the on-screen keyboard. And sometimes you'll get a weird connection issue. You might have to forget Bluetooth controllers pretty frequently but two player works fine and you can seemingly switch between controllers pretty easily. But no controller will be able to wake your Steam Deck from sleep like every other console's controller can. So you will have to get yourself up off the couch and press the power button, which is probably a good thing. You should probably get the steps in. Close that ring on your Apple Watch. The Steam Deck is a brand new $400 device with a $90 add-on for a dock that isn't really necessary because you can just use any old dongle. So let's just say like $450 then. The Nintendo Switch is a five-year-old $300 device, max $350, that comes with a dock, but is kind of stuck in the past in terms of raw power. There's two major reasons why I've been getting more games on the Steam Deck than on my Switch. Games that come out on all platforms usually perform better on the Steam Deck than they would on the Switch. But even more importantly than that, I mostly play all of my games, including Switch games, at my desk setup. So when I play the Nintendo Switch, it's almost always docked at my computer. Steam has a great cloud save system. So I can play games on my Steam Deck and I can switch over to my desktop computer with the same save file and everything and it's gonna perform awesome. 
So if I want to play the game portably, I don't have to compromise that much power because the Steam Deck is very powerful. But if I want to play at home, I don't have to compromise any power at all because I can use my beautiful gaming rig. And all of that is a really long-winded way of saying that this dock is essentially useless to me. The best use case is to just place this dock at your TV setup, right next to your Switch. I can see myself using it in that environment to play the emulated games if I don't want to take the trouble hooking up original hardware. Although the analog pocket has been pretty good at that too, so it would have to be a pretty power intensive emulated game like an N64 or a GameCube or something. I could also see myself using it as a portable way to play games with friends, maybe bringing it over and hooking it up to their TV for some four player Goldeneye or something. The dock conveniently fits exactly in the little space on the back of the case that came included with the Steam Deck. That must have been on purpose. So I do think getting a dock for your Steam Deck opens up a whole new world of possibilities for an already great device. I just think for me personally, this thing is just gonna act as a fancy charger slash display stand. So what do you guys think about the Steam Deck dock? Is it a little pricey because some of the competition is a lot cheaper? Is it worth getting to enhance your experience or would you rather get a, a third party or would you rather not have one at all? I gotta be honest, kinda thinking I should've just not gotten one at all, but I needed to make the video. But I understand that something like this will make the $400 to $600 purchase of a Steam Deck a little more versatile for some people. Maybe they don't have a nice gaming rig at home to be able to bounce their cloud saves off of. Maybe they do just wanna plug it into their TV. Maybe they don't have a switch at all and they want this thing to have the same sort of capabilities with their TV or the same sort of ease of use as just plugging it into a different display when you wanna play it there. So I understand there are different use cases for different people, which is why I spend 15 to 20 minutes in a video talking about a stupid dock. Anyway, leave it in the comments below, at me on Twitter and any and all this other social media garbage. I stream on twitch.tv slash wolfden every once in a while, usually I'm, I'm playing a Mario game. Sometimes I tinker around with stuff to make videos out of, so go over there and, and we can chat about the future videos. Thank you Surfshark for helping sponsor this video. Don't forget to check them out if you need a VPN in your life at the link in the description. Also, if you like this shirt, we got them over on wolfdenapparel.com. It's a glow-in-the-dark thing. I, I'm doing this like you could see it glow in the dark. But of course, the most important thing that you guys can do to help support this channel is just subscribe right here and share this video with a friend, a friend who has a Steam Deck or is thinking about getting one. Hey, I'm hoping a lot more people are getting their hands on these things so a lot more people would be interested in stuff like this. Thank you guys very much. You have yourself a very good week. And I spilled my water everywhere.